So moving on to <laughs> the next uh, indie segment, we're going to change it up a little bit for you. Uh, what do you got for us, Kevin? Yeah, normally here's where I'd be doing the uh, indie star question. But this week we have a new and ridiculous segment. Just like last week when we talked about the Undertaker streak. Yeah, new segment. This is pretty awesome. Sorry I keep stealing the Dexus thing, guys. It's a different video at launch. Oh, right. Nobody gets it. I don't get it. Uh, so this week, instead of that questions bit that I normally do, which I'll bring back next week, uh, once a month, the indie guys a break. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Once a month, I decided I'm going to do five matches that you guys shouldn't miss. Uh, matches. So too bad they already happened. You yeah. missed them. Sorry. The <laughs> segment's over. Uh, on to SmackDown. Moving on to SmackDown. <laughs> Uh, no, it's five great matches which you can look up on DVDs or video on demand or uh, YouTube. YouTube. Welcome to YouTube. Uh, first, starting off, come up in the search bar up there. We'll wait. Yeah. And maybe if you're lucky, they'll be in the videos to watch over there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one, or I know you can, can find. We'll on post links in there. Maybe. No, I'm not saying we will. No. We won't want, post links. I don't want to get in trouble for copyright stuff. I don't want to be. Okay. Copyright if you're posting links. Yeah, that's not. Links to other YouTube videos. I'll post them to the comments. Right <laughs> in the description. So, okay. search bar, videos to watch, links. And we got it covered. The first one on the WWE Network. If you have it. Uh, WCW's Beach Blast, their precursor to Bash at the Beach. Uh, WWE Network, we'll there. 1992. Sting versus Cactus Jack in a false count anywhere, man. Such a good match. Oh, really good. God. It didn't go too long. And it was a great running thing where Sting was the champion and he had run through the different villains of WCW and he needed something new and something fresh after going against guys like Vader a lot where, you know, bringing Cactus Jack, who's not the biggest guy, not the most imposing looking opponent, but would, had a different style, something that the WCW fans I weren't would, quite accustomed to. I would say not the biggest, not the most imposing, but definitely... One of the ones to be the most scared of. Scary. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't fucking catch this jack. That's just... That's yeah. stupid. Yeah. Fast forward ten years. What? And one month. Minus a couple days. Uh, for match number Maybe two on the list. Undertaker versus Jeff Hardy on Monday Night Raw. Uh, 2002. July 1st. Their ladder match for the WWE Championship on Raw. This match made Jeff Hardy my favorite wrestler for years. I got so excited in this match because I thought Jeff Hardy was gonna win. Yeah, it, this, this was kind of the beginning of the first like break of the Hardys, wasn't it? Yeah. Somewhat, yeah. Cause, yeah, yeah, because this is during the the brand split. Yeah. And so like, Jeff is doing this thing with with Taker. While Matt, I think, went on and did the cruiserweight thing with yeah, Rey Mysterio, yeah, that Hardy version. Uh, no, I mean it was it was the first thing that to me solidified Jeff as a guy who could do the singles thing on his yeah, own. Definitely. Uh, and it made me get excited because I thought he was going to win. This was you know, prior to the any time we had the big guys because Money in the Bank uh, over the years has brought out having big guys in ladder matches, yeah. mm-hmm. adding in the Bobby Lashley, Mark Henry, right. Big Show, Kane, and the ladder matches on a regular basis. Yeah. So I, in my head, I was like, there's no way Undertaker's going to win this ladder match. Yeah, because right. I think it, I think at this point... Yeah, this, this was Jeff Hardy's match. Like, like, Well, and at this point, I think the biggest guy that had been in a ladder match was Razor Ramon. Yeah. Yeah. He was a pretty big guy, let's be yeah. fair. Yeah. 6'5", 6'6", something like that. Yeah, he's big. But Undertaker's bigger. Yeah. yeah. Uh... Match number three. Uh, let's go over to the other promotion, who in 2003 still up and coming and getting uh, getting a name for themselves. Back DNA when they were good, when we uh, cared about them. Yep. On June 25th, 2003, uh, for the TNA Tag Team, or was the NWA Tag yeah, Team Champions? Yeah, TNA didn't have any belts yet. Yes. Uh, America's Most Wanted, James Storm and Chris Harris versus Triple X. Christopher Daniels and Evil Skipper. Uh, crazy match, super bloody, a lot of super high spots. They did that Tower of Doom superplex off the cage. Yeah. And then, isn't this 
the move, the Hurricanrana off the top. Oh, yeah, the if Paris. If you've ever seen yeah. an old, like, montage of great TNA moments, you see Elix Skipper walk across the top of the cage and Hurricanrana Chris Harris off the top of the cage. Yeah. Unfucking believable. It, it was a great match, and I think. Other stipulation on the match to the losing team had to disband. Yeah. So that was where we saw the end of Triple X for about four or five years before they would reform later. But the rise of the following. Yeah. Is that an oxymoron? The following, but he's rising. Yeah, sure. what up? I like uh, Chris Daniels. Uh, skip two years later for match number four. Uh, we have the Gorilla Warfare match between Kevin Steen and Super Dragon used to end their feud. That they've been having in oh. Pro Wrestling Gorilla. Now, this, this, scary was, match. this is one yeah. of those matches where it was like super violent hardcore match, but not in the traditional sense that a lot of people think. Yeah. Because it wasn't very blood and guts. No, I, th- uh, I don't think either. Did either of them really I think, I think Sting got cut a little bit, but not like anything substantial. But I mean, the, uh, most, it was just really. Violent. It was violent. It, it was very a, aggressive. It was aggressive, yeah. you know, fighting out into the crowd. They, yeah, they start the match off by running through the crowd and basically knocking down every chair. <laughs> yeah, they had a vendetta against chairs in this match. Uh, they, they use a lot of the chairs against each other, a lot of no-selling moves, a lot of dives right off the bat. Uh, my spot to look out for in this match is face chops. Oh. Because they chop each other in the face. Yeah. Ow, oh, fuck. It's like once a piece. No. But, Terrible. Uh, yeah, they do. They chop each other in the face. And it's absolutely bad. They use tables. They use. Uh, they do use thumbtacks, uh, handcuffs. Overall, very barbaric. Uh, but it told a good story. And uh, it, it wasn't too over the top. Yeah. It was a great way to end the feud. Yeah, great ending to their feud that had been building up for like over a year. So, good on them for that one. Uh, Steen even put the uh, Super Dragon mask back on in uh, backtracking to his uh, debut in Pro Wrestling Gorilla when he was the fake Super Dragon. Uh-huh. Where we covered the attack Super Dragon in matches. Uh, match number five. This guy's probably maybe, maybe his favorite one of the oh, list. Holy crap. We just, I we just watched this, this the other day. We just watched this, his pants. We, yeah, afterwards. we just watched this like three days ago. Uh, to me, it's definitely one of the best pure wrestling matches that you can see on the market. Uh, Mike Quackenbush versus Ophidian in the 12 March Summit Tournament. The match, uh, the event, a demon in his pocket. Uh, 5:25:11 is the date. Find it. You can find it. I think maybe Smartmark Video sells the DVD. They might already have it out on VOD. Uh, if they don't, they'll have it out soon uh, because they're trying to process all their videos to video on demand now. Just buy the show. Yeah. One yeah. way or another. For this match alone. Mike Fogg and Bush versus the video. Oh, just look at it this way. You get this amazing match and some other matches. Yeah. Which none of the matches on the show. Are bad. No, we we watched the whole show. We yeah. watched the whole yeah. event. A lot of good matches. But this, the, I and mean, it wasn't the main event. No, and that's the thing. Like the main event was uh, Kingston and um, what was it? It was just Kingston. Eddie Kingston came out. It was the main event? Match. Eddie Kingston versus Kofi Kingston. Yeah. The main event was Kingston. It's Kingston. In anyway. Kingstown. Uh, the Kingston fight. Fight. Eddie Kingston, who usually always deli- always delivers a great match in Chikara, could not top this. Yeah, I mean... Not a chance. There are a lot of really, really great Chikara matches. Uh, you know, I have my lists in my head. Best oh, yeah. by people, you know, best superstars matches. In my opinion, Ophidian, best singles match in his entire career. He was he was able to hold his own against Mike Quackenbush. Yeah, in a hold for hold style match. Oh, so good. Uh, made yeah made him look amazing, uh, despite the losing the match. He he might have he might have lost the match, but holy God, if he didn't win respect, God is holy. If he didn't win respect in that match, 
Yeah, so it's, basically, it's just so good. I put that one in my top five Chikara matches. Pro oh, that is a, that is my Chikara dream match right there. The fact that I didn't know it happened until I watched it the other day, my mind was blown. Yeah, it was great. There's lots of suspense. Uh, you know, I can't say enough good things about the five matches that we just went, went over. Yeah. Uh, except for they were great, and go watch them. Go yeah. find them. Go watch them. I mean, you can buy the Astonishing X Mass DVD for the Steam Dragon Fight, or you could uh, buy uh, PWG Sells Out, the first box that they ever put out. It's on there, too. Uh, I have no idea how you can find the AMW versus Triple X. I'm going to do my best to find... If I can find YouTube links, I will do my best to find them, and I will post them in the description below. Yeah, that one you might be able to find on YouTube. Yeah. Party Taker, uh, you can... I know for sure you can find highlights videos on YouTube because I've watched them so many times. This is obviously a favorite of, it, of Mr. Wolf. It's my second favorite match. Really? Next to Chris Benoit, Triple H, Shawn Michaels, WrestleMania. I and mean, Stephen Richards, Chris Benoit. Stephen Richards, Chris yeah. Benoit, and Triple H. Yeah. Because so WWE uh, is trying, yeah, they're trying to erase Shawn Michaels from his existence. <laughs> we all know this. Yeah. Why are you trying to erase Shawn Michaels? He has history in WWE. Triple Myrtle. Tripper Black Tripper Tripper Myrtle. Tripper Myrtle. Alright, uh, the Snake Cactus Jack match you can find on the WWE Network. And I think they're getting ready to put on a Bash of the Beach Best of DVD. Are they really? Uh, the WWE, why are you still putting out these Best of WCW pay-per-view DVDs? They're all on the network. It's, it's their insurance policy, just in case the network completely fails. Yeah. They still have to put these matches up. Plus... Network's only available in the U.S. This is true. But very soon, it will be available worldwide. WWE has just sent out uh, invitations for beta testers for the international WWE Network, available to only the first 2,000 people who accept, which I bet I've accepted by now. Probably. Yeah. And speaking of other in international WWE news, their tour in Japan last weekend, they announced the signing of Japanese star Kenta, which was done by Triple H and Hulk Hogan. I know you've been excited for this, you know, along with Roderick Strong and Kevin Steen. All three of them will be coming into WWE pretty soon. So NXT, NXT. is about to get a lot more excited. And Prince excited. Devitt. And Prince Devitt, yeah. NXT, NXT just went Super Saiyan. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. Why, because they were in Japan? <laughs> yes. Okay, cool. Absolutely. No, because they were, they were good before, and now they're back. Yeah. Yeah. Now they're over 9,000. <laughs> way Pounds before Super Saiyan. Saiyan. I don't give a fuck. Uh, I do. No, uh, I don't. I don't want. Them. Yeah, I mean, you have to look at look at the talents of NXT right now. Sami Zayn, uh, Adrian Neville, uh, some of the main roster guys who are down there. The Kid, and Gabriel, and Adam Rose. Yeah. And you have the awesome tag team division they're building up. And then you have like Xavier Woods, Kalisto. And Tyler Breeze, and yeah, Callisto. And now you think you're adding Kevin Steen, Roderick Strong, Kenta, and Prince okay. Devitt. The things are just. NXT right now, I feel is already, like, the way I watch the shows, like, main event, superstars type things are down here, SmackDown, and then, like, NXT and Raw right now are, like, tied for me at first. Yeah. See, the thing is, SmackDown is good. It's just, they're hit and miss sometimes. Rematches. Yeah. Too many rematches. Go both ways now. Which, yeah. uh, I think that's a pretty good segue. Good SmackDown. Yeah. Went into our SmackDown rundown. Uh, rematch rundown. Rematch rundown. Uh, That's rundown SmackDown verbally. What really threw me off about SmackDown is that they opened for the match. Yeah. Which I... When's the last time that happened? Yeah. Uh, they usually open up with some sort of authority promo. But we got uh, Sheamus and Dolph Ziggler versus Fandango and The Miz. Uh, obviously setting up more tension for the Battleground Battle Royal. Sheamus and Ziggler would win. It's a solid match. In I, my head, it was just Ziggler versus Fandango. I like this match 50%. He loves Sheamus and the Miz. Yep. <laughs> That's a lie. Uh, up next, we would have our talk segment of the night, where Ambrose would call out Rollins saying, you know, the three-on-one beating you guys gave, gave me on Monday, is that all you got? Is yeah. that all the authorities got? Ambrose is unhinged at yeah. this point. Ambrose... Ambrose is probably the most exciting guy to watch on the oh, yeah. right now. So, 
So intriguing. Ambrose is going to take... Ambrose is going to take CM Punk's spot. Yep. And I believe shatter through CM Punk's glass ceiling right now. Probably. I hope so. I can believe it. No, no offense to CM Punk, but... I yeah. Like, I'm not saying Dean Ambrose is clearly better than Punk. I would not claim that because they're both so good. Yeah. But the ceiling that CM Punk could not get through, Ambrose is just going to smash through. Ambrose already has this aura that people are drawn to. Yeah. And it took CM Punk a while to get there. And then CM Punk... You know, hit that point. Ambrose is already on his way up there. Yeah. So, but uh, Rollins, uh, Ambrose would be calling out Rollins. Rollins would say, uh, "Unfortunately, yeah, unfortunately, you know, I want to come out and I want to fight you, Dean Ambrose, but I tweaked my knee on Monday, so I'm not medically cleared." I tweaked my knee, stopping your face. You probably. I your, wish your you would have said that. My, like, your yeah. head hurt me. In my yeah. leg. So <laughs> instead of getting a match against Rollins. We get Ambrose versus Kane, which is a rematch from I believe two weeks ago. Yeah, something like that. Uh, Woo, rematch. <sighs> Our next segment. Who didn't see this coming? Really? Nikki Bella's gonna be special referee. Wait a second. For, For Alicia Fox versus Eve Marie. Wait a minute. No, what threw me off is actually that Eva Marie and Alicia Fox started wrestling. Yeah. No, I expected it to go straight to a beatdown before the match even started. I didn't. I, I ex- The I, fact that they locked up surprised yeah. me. That's because that's, that's all Eva Marie can do. Uh, no, that's what surprised him. Eva Marie can lock up? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. It, she, she was trying to do her shove, but she boxed she, it. She got yeah, caught up in Alicia Fox's Get arm. down a bit. <laughs> I put my arms down. <laughs> you just look like a retarded lobster. That's even right. Lobster. Uh, I, I, I personally walked you by the window. I mean, it went to a beatdown. We knew it was going to happen. Nikki Bell's going to screw again. A highlight of this segment? Nikki Bell's referee outfit. Yes. More of that. There was some female referees coming. That'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, do it. Uh, a female referee coming for the Divas Division. That'd be great. I'd be okay with that. Uh, up next, we had another Dust to Dust promo, and I we were talking before the show started, and I On wanted to know, I wanted to know, is this going somewhere? Yes, Kevin. They want to be the tag team champions. Oh. So, the, okay. That's the gold they're talking about. They need okay. more gold. So, yeah, I, and I felt like going through, I was like, I, the fact that I'm just watching this and I'm like, I'm You're weirded. You're trying to figure out the point. I'm weirded out by Gold Dust and Stardust, so I'm like, I'm missing points of the dialogue. Yeah. I'm sure if I went through and watched all the Dust to Dust promos yeah. there's been, well, there's probably a whole, like, novel worth yeah. of information. With Dust to Dust has the same deal as Bray Wyatt. Where it's talking riddles. Their promos don't make sense until you stop and listen, and then they make perfect sense. Yeah. Like once you rearrange all the words and figure it out, okay, it makes perfect sense. Yeah, and you know it, it fits into what I think I predicted it sometime in the last few weeks is my prediction for SummerSlam: Gold Dust and Stardust versus the Whites at yeah. SummerSlam. I think that's gonna. I think that right there, the dynamic between those two, would have some great pre-match promo stuff. I hope that the Wyatt family isn't scared but confused and freaked out. Like that would add a really cool dynamic. To yeah, that, to like that this is a team that the Wyatts don't even know how to handle. Yeah. Speaking of the Wyatts, we would go on to something that you asked for last week. Last week, Chris Jericho versus Luke Harper. Yes. I uh, had texted you when that yeah. match came up. Before the match started, before the match started, I wanted, I wanted to know that there was a really cool image when the Wyatts are making their way to the ring and Jericho is actually standing in the dark, but he turns his jacket on. Yeah. Almost like an act of defiance against the Wyatts because everyone yeah. just kind of sits in the dark and they wait for the Wyatts to get right. there. Right. But Jericho kind of made that like, you're not scaring me. I'm here too. <laughs> you're not scaring me. I have a nightlight. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, I'm pretty sure it was just Jericho's afraid of the dark, so he had to oh, fine. on. Oh, I just thought I thought it was you a know, really cool image. That kind of reminds me of a question I have, because, like we just said, 
The Wyatts, if you decipher their promos, you figure out what they mean. Is Bray Wyatt just a really big Chris Jericho fan, and that's what this feud's about? Because his promos have been like, you said you would save us, but you left. Where were you, Chris Jericho? Yeah, it's al- it's almost like it's almost like they took like Cena being pissed off at the Rock, saying that he'd never yeah. leave, but he was pissed off. Bray Wyatt is like was like legitimately depressed. Yeah, like, that Jericho left after he said he was going to save us. Yeah, ah, so uh, this, I'm sure I'm hoping that's a dynamic that they add. Like, yeah, they kind of they kind of develop that particular part of the storyline further down. Yeah. Um, but the, oh, like Bray Wyatt could blame Chris Jericho for all the bad things because that happened to him because Chris Jericho, you said you would save us. I wanted to be saved, and then you left. Oh, that gave me chills. Let's do this. Guys, I'm book it. so down for it. Book it. This match, book it. we knew it was going to be good. I was really worried at first because they started slow. Why did you put a fucking commercial in the middle of this match? Because it was starting slow. Because they needed... Stop it. No more commercials during matches. We found out what happened when you did that. <laughs> yeah. While Kofi and Cesaro have a match. Don't do it. There's Keep doing it. You need that advertisement. Yeah, you're, but you're gonna do it after a match. Fuck, you do it after matches. But anyway, the match was awesome. Uh, Harper's corner suplex, like, like the super. I don't know what it was. Jericho was trying to do something, and then he turned it into a suplex. It was yeah. just, oh, so good. Uh, but Chris Jericho would defeat Luke Harper. Uh, the Wyatts would attack Jericho, but Jericho would be saved by the Wyatt's battleground opponents, the Usos. Yep. So we could be seeing a potential maybe post battleground six man tag match developing here. Probably. Uh, very Probably very very much like the uh, Bray Wyatt Cena situation. Yeah. Uh, we had some more build up between uh, Swagger and Zed versus Lana and Rusev. Uh, just more, you know Lana saying that Rusev is better, but Zeb saying that that this Sunday Swagger's going to be crush proof and yeah. just and then they got into a, a flag waving competition at the end. That was yeah. the angriest flag waving I've ever seen. <laughs> it was. And I think Sw- was, I think Swagger won. Yeah, Swagger was definitely the angrier flag waver. <laughs> yeah, yes, who could wave the angriest? Yeah, I just, I thought it was hilarious. Try that sometimes, guys. Get some giant flags and have a. F- Angry flag waving competition. It gets tiring after a while. I mean, you you got to, you got to have some strength to keep doing that. Some upper body strength, some core strength, and some good stamina. Yeah, but uh, yeah, that's a little more build up for battleground. Uh, more build up for battleground. We had two of the battleground battle royal participants, Del Rio and Kofi Kingston. Short but good. Del Rio would win against Kofi. Uh, I don't think there. I really wasn't anything to write home about no. in this match. I mean, nothing. Stood out as a strong showing by Kofi. Yeah, uh, really good. Sp- I think the, the, one of the best spots was uh, Kofi chasing Del Rio and sliding into the ring right into the super kick. Yeah, yeah. That was uh, oh, I thought I thought Kofi was out at that point. Uh, yeah, was, you know we're getting more tension between potential intercontinental Battle champions around Battle Royal peeps. Uh, one of the best backstage segments in a while. Uh, Fandango telling Summer and Layla that once he wins the Intercontinental Championship, that they both want to come back to him. That sounds a lot like what Summer Rae said to Sasha. Yeah. Oh. You know, I thought the same thing. I didn't put those two things together, but now I did. Yeah. <laughs> which which makes me really con- more confused with Summer Rae. Is he is she a face or is she a heel? She's a main roster face and next to heel. I don't like. Her. Her WWE character is a face, but the real Summary on NXT is a bitch. Yeah. Bitch face. <laughs> anyway, obviously Summer and Layla weren't going to join back up with Fun Dog. Yeah. Was ma- they made it very apparent that they're right. not going to be. And so after associated. Summer Rayla leave. S- Summer Rayla? Yeah. I just call them Summer Lay. Like. <laughs> oh, that sounds like fun. <laughs> Uh, after after, after the summer, after, 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 uh, okay. After summer and Layla would leave, Bo comes in, and <laughs> this was the best Bo Dallas. <laughs> Can segment. we count this as another win of Bo Dallas's record, please? The, I I yeah I can accept this as being sixteen and Bo. 
because he really friggin' owned Fandango <laughs> in this promo. He, he you know, we can't remember the first part. Yeah, if you know, but, post in the comments. But the, the best part was when he tells Fandango that he doesn't have to worry. That with his smooth moves and fancy pants, some lady will dance right into his heart, right into his heart, and all he has to do is believe. And that's going to be how Santino uh. stays as an Oh my person. God! <laughs> no, <laughs> his you really just come back, Santino, <laughs> and dance into Fandango's life. Is it bad that I kind of want that to happen? A little bit. That'd be hilarious. I am. I'm so on board with that storyline. It's like, fine. stop glaring at me. No, it'd be hilarious. I yeah. But I speaking of Summerlay, uh, oh. they <laughs> they would go on to a tag team match against a team that I've dubbed as PJ. He said it first. He did not on the video. Yeah. My word. My notes. I wrote these last night. There's video evidence of me saying it first. Like so. yourself. Uh, That's on episode 100. <laughs> Shit, I'm jumping the gun. Uh, so, PJ would defeat Summerlay in a really good match. Probably the best match on SmackDown, in my opinion. In my opinion. I, th I, th I thought that this this had some of the best action that we hadn't seen. Yeah. We haven't seen the, this particular combination of demons, which is great. Yeah. And I'm all four loving, are really talented. Yeah, all four are really, really solid wrestlers. Uh, AJ would blind tag for the win. Uh, and Paige is not happy. Yeah, I thought Paige was gonna. Paige is murder. staring AJ down, and AJ AJ realizes what she did. She reaches the hand out. She's hoping for a handshake. Give her the puppy dog face. And then they hug. It was cute. Yeah. Then they hug, and that, it's all good. That puppy dog face. Is that not the most adorable tag team ever? Yeah. It, Paige and AJ. Come on. It's the same look that got CM Punk to propose to her. Yeah. AJ just knows what she's doing. Yeah. I think it's going to evolve into more than just a friendship. Yes. Uh, moving on, we'd have a backstage statement where Kane would tell Rollins to not get any ideas about cashing in this Sunday at Battleground. Uh, I don't think Rollins is going to take Kane's warning into consideration. But... I don't think he's going to be able to, though. No, I don't, I don't, I'm not suspecting a cash in at all. I, I don't even think there's going to be a cash in attempt. No? He's wrestling Dean Ambrose. <laughs> this is true. Speaking of Kane and Dean Ambrose, we go on to our main event, where Dean Ambrose would defeat Kane by disqualification! What the fuck? Yeah. Stop it! I liked the match up until that point, though. Yeah. <laughs> it, it was a good, uh... Kane versus somebody much smaller than him. But when Ambrose got back up from getting beat down and had his offensive moments, I believed it. Yeah. Yes. That's the great thing about Ambrose. With the bandages on his face, the wrapped up oh, shoulder, yes. this guy, you know that he is such a badass. It's, it's as if this guy were in death matches or something. I know, right? He's just ridiculously tough. Uh... He, I think this Don't is... Don't he's got some sort of protective shield around himself. Yeah, uh, not anymore. No? The, no, it, the shield's been broken. It's uh, just... He's just... He's too fucking crazy. Yeah. yeah. Actually, JBL had a really good comment before the match started. He said, this guy is too tough for his body. Yeah. Yes. That was a great line. And it makes sense because Ambrose will just get the shit kicked out of him. Yeah. And he'll just keep going. He doesn't care. And that's that's why I love watching Dean Ambrose matches. Yeah. I believe that he has the will to win, but not always the ability. Yeah. WWE, can can I request something for like you a year sure. a year and a half from now? Whoa. After after the authority storyline's done, once they've moved away, can we get a Dean Ambrose and Kane feud after you've built Kane back up? Similar to the Orton Kane feud we had a few years back. Ooh, yeah. I dig it. That and, and honestly, Ambrose would be way more believable than Orton. Yeah. Because granted, I don't, I don't think Orton is not a tough guy in any way, shape, or form. No. But Ambrose could probably kick the shit out of half the guys on the roster. Yeah. He's just, he's too good. And I'm hoping to see so much more from Ambrose. Which, if you go and read the article about him on WWE.com, 
And he specifically says the only reason he went and did deathmatch type stuff was because he was bored of regular wrestling. Yeah. Because this guy can decide what kind of... It's just like, yeah, fuck it, I'll go through some glass and some... Yeah. They talk about him getting attacked with a skill saw. Yeah. I saw that. Legit. They talk about it. It's... It's... There's a reason... There's a reason why when the shield split off that... Seth Rollins wrestles without his shirt on, and Dean, Dean Ambrose, Ambrose doesn't. doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. His back is the prettiest thing you've ever seen. Yeah, it's... We love Dean Ambrose, but unfortunately... We just spent, like, the last five minutes trying to lick Dean Ambrose's balls. <laughs> I'm okay with it. Yeah. Uh, Dean Ambrose would win by disqualification because it's a fucking authority storyline match. Rollins would hit Ambrose with a briefcase... Him and Kane would double team on Ambrose, and Rollins would hit the curb stomp. Obviously, his knee is fine. Yeah, uh, I think so he might have been lying earlier. Maybe I'm, the, I'm thinking so. But he hit the curb stomp just like he did on Monday, and that is the way that we would uh, end SmackDown. And heels lie. Yeah. You might want to sit down for this. Oh, good job. <laughs> heels. Heels are liars. Sorry, Kev. Sorry. It's, 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 it's going to be okay. Uh, so we want to thank you guys for watching this week's episode. Be sure to like, subscribe, favorite. Pass this around on Facebook, Twitter. All these buttons down here. Uh, uh, click them all except for this one. Yeah. 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 Don't, don't, click, don't click the thumbs down. Cause and uh, comment if you think there should be a Bo Dallas button. Yeah. Oh, comment. God. Just comment. We need comments. Yeah. Comment, please. It, even if it's... You know what? Even if it's comment. just hashtag Sharknado2. Comment oh, first, right. only if you are the first comment, because that'd be the first in like five videos. Yeah. We're you would do, literally be the first. We're gonna let you comment first. Do it. I dare you. But really, what we, what we want you to do is we we want you to tell us what you think about the show. Yeah. Discuss what we comment talked. first, and then like All that yeah, stuff. like first yeah. discuss what's happened. You know, start a conversation. Meet some new people on YouTube. Let's let's talk about wrestling. This is Fans Talking Wrestling on the Wrestling Rundown. For your hosts, I'm Travis Colt, this is Thomas Wolf, and this is Kevin Hawk. And we thank you once again, and we'll see you next week. Thanks.